All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the November Social Media Masterclass. This is Renee Tompkins, Director of Social Media uh, for Layer Realty Partners. Excited to be here with you today. Uh, we have a jam-packed session, so hopefully you've uh, brought a pen and paper or your cell phone to take uh, to take pictures with. All right. So on the agenda is how to build a large following. I know. Um, especially on Instagram, uh, there's just a different dynamic on getting followers. Uh, so we'll talk about that, as well as some top marketing channels for 2024, or the top marketing channels, I should say, um, and how to preach those buyer agent success stories, uh, definitely during this time, especially. And then we'll talk about networking versus marketing. Uh, and we're going to have a brief chat about fake followers. Uh, it's certainly a thing. Uh, so we're going to talk about that as well as um, something that I've tested out here in uh, my area and it, I'm having um, really good success with it. I'm, I'm dubbing it. I'm naming it. It's called the reverse review. Uh, so we'll talk about that as well as um, our standard conversation on daily success rituals, mindsets for success, as well as recommended reading. I've got a great book for you this month. Kudos, and we'll leave time for a Q&A as well. All right. So the expectations uh, for today's class, as always, is uh, to maintain a growth mindset, be open to making results-based changes in your business that will help you grow. Uh, also take notes and interact by asking questions and sharing stories, as well as challenge yourself to develop your own social media success strategy. Uh, and then here's a quote that I, I found um, inspiring is to activate your fans. Don't just collect them like baseball cards. And this is something I see all the time on Instagram, especially um, where people have like a really high follower count, which is great, um, but a low following, meaning um, you're not following them back. So something that we'll talk about later in today's class, but certainly um, something to give some thought to. So let's get into how to build a large social media following. Um, different dynamics happen on um, different sites, for sure, I will say. Um, so let's first begin by, um, you know, before we can get into any initiative by uh, of, of getting followers, we have to really get ourselves set up for success. Uh, and to do that, we're going to first begin by completing our profile, which will consist of a photo, a professional, hopefully, photo of you. Not a logo if you are, unless you're on a team, but even if you are an agent on a team, only your team's page really should uh, showcase the, the logo as the profile picture or the brokerage, right? So you want to be showcasing you. So hopefully that's a professionally shot photograph. Um, and then also a what's in it for people to follow you. And this is your bio. And we talked about this in a past previous masterclass about the importance of crafting an epic bio is not to make the bio about you really as little about you as possible. I know some things you, we, we, we want to have in there, um, but the, the bio should really be why someone should follow you. What's in it for them to do business with you. Um, and then a CTA, what we call a call to action. Uh, and that's a link with your website, your link tree, some way to get in touch with you, a call to action. So um, if you go to my social media page, especially on um, Instagram, where we're so limited uh, in characters, uh, I think my my um, my bio covers all of the um, the requirements of making it, you know, talking a bit about yourself, um, your experience and what you bring to the table, sharing a little bit about you personally, and then um you know, why someone should do business with you and then end it with a call to action. So certainly you can borrow mine or use mine if you like. Um, but you're, that, this is how you're going to get set up. So those are the basics of getting your, your social media set up. And then um, you want to identify your target audience, really. And, and, you know, I see people out there adding everybody. And, and so they're following like 5,000, 7,000 people, yet they have maybe 350 followers. So, and that's kind of an off, off kilter. Um, so identify really your target audience and those people that you really want to be connected with. Um, and here are some suggestions if you're unsure, uh, some suggested real estate connections. So most of these people uh, should be on, uh, have pages on social media, 
And I would think most of these people would love to be connected with you because you're going to help them also grow their business. So we have home inspectors, uh, house cleaners, stagers, photographers. I mean, the list goes on landscapers, roofers, movers, lenders, painters. These are all people who um, are small business owners and are looking to also grow their business. And what better way to do that by connecting with agents who are going to help them do it. Um, so, and, and at the bottom, you'll see here that I actually have other agents. And, and I know there's an opinion out there that some agents believe that they don't want to be connected with agents on social media. They want to grow it organically by connecting with the consumer. And that's very wise. However, I will say this, um, agent connections are invaluable. I would not dismiss the agent relationships on social media by any way, by any means, I should say. Don't, don't dismiss that at all. I would definitely encourage that you connect with other agents uh, on social media. And you're going to do this. Um, you know, I, I have a lot of people uh, who call me, text me, uh, message me, email me for tips on social media regarding the fact that they're, you know, they're not getting the results that they're seeking on social media by way of either videos, content, presence, whatever. And here's what it really all comes down to um, is commenting and engaging with your connections and, and really treating people like people versus connections, right? And, and I'll say it in this masterclass and I've said it in probably every other one that I've hosted is you have to view your connections as a room full of people waiting to hear what you have to say. We'll talk about that more here, but I wholeheartedly believe that. So here are some engagement tips uh, to help you is you have to really authentically react and, and comment and participate with people in, on social media um, and ask them questions to keep the conversation going. You know, like if somebody, if you post something about, you know, uh, I do this often too. Um, you know, what do you think about this, um, this living room? What are your thoughts on this? And then I'll follow up and I'll send some messages out like, oh my gosh, you're so right. I didn't care for that. I did, you know, what would you do if, you know, it, would this work for you in your house? What didn't you like about it? Just keep the conversation going. Um, recommend preferred vendors. This is another way um, to engage. And we're going to talk about doing something pretty epic later in the class. But if you have received good service from a vendor or you know of a vendor that's providing epic service, um, recommend them. I always feel more comfortable recommending people I've actually done business with, even though other reviewers may highly love them. Um, but don't hesitate to recommend your preferred vendors. People love that. I'm telling you, it's it's a great thing to do. And then ask for recommendations to build your own list of vendors. If you are new in the business uh, or to an area uh, like myself, I am building my list of preferred vendors. And I'm doing that um, by, number one, going into a lot of businesses and experiencing them firsthand myself, but also asking for recommendations from other agents who have done business with, with vendors. So um and taking the time to read their Google reviews, et cetera. So you can build your own list if you don't have the connections up front is what I'm saying. And then um, share anything. So like if a local business is having an event or a promotion, especially now during the holidays, we just had Small Business Saturday, share those uh, posts to your stories and tag them. I think they automatically get tagged, but tag them again. Um, and share them. I mean, people love that stuff. And I'll talk about that later in, in the class, but that's a really cool thing to do. Mostly be reciprocal, um, you know, especially like on Instagram, uh, but on any of the social media platforms where, uh, you know, you have people liking and commenting on your stuff. If you're a busy agent specifically, take the time to thank them in comments and say, I really appreciate you, right? Keep the keep the comments, reactions, or keep the comments rather to at least four words minimum. Um, so let them know they're appreciated. Another thing you can do is make an appreciation post thanking all of the people who engage with your page and tag them in that post. 
People love to be appreciated. Another thing you need to do is be consistent though. If you want the algorithm to favor your posts, uh, to, to, yeah, to favor your presence on social media and your posts, you have to consistently post and engage. There is no shortcut to it, right? So I, I hear a lot of people will say, I'm not getting anything from social media. I'm not getting the results from social media. Excuse me one second. Um, you know, social media is like any part of your business. It, you've got to dive in. You've got to go all in with it. And you've got to time block and schedule and be purposeful and intentful on social media. Um, it's not just something that you can get into a rabbit hole of, oh, look at this ad for these um, these jeans, these boots, whatever. Uh, and now you're not being purposeful at all. So, and it's easy to have that happen. My point is definitely time block and be purposeful on social media, if it's a way that you want to grow your business. Otherwise, just hang out on social media and have fun. But it's a huge source of business building and it doesn't have to cost you anything if you do it right. So my two cents. All right. And again, I said this before, your followers are real people. Um, envision your followers as a room full of people waiting to hear what you have to say. You wouldn't go to an event, walk into a room, and stand against the wall and not engage with anybody, right? Um, and no one wants to feel left out either. You wouldn't be talking to someone and then just walk away. That's the social uh, social media equivalent of not commenting or reacting on a, on on somebody else's uh, post or or comment. So, and the one and here's another thing too: not following people back unless you truly don't want to follow them. And and I understand. I do understand that, but. Uh, the one-sided follow says, you know, I'm interested in your support, but I'm not necessarily interested in supporting you back, right? So that that's sort of like an etiquette thing that you want to recognize. So th this is why some people might follow you and then unfollow you because they realize, well, you don't have time to support me back. So you obviously don't have time to, to build on any on anything here. I'll move on. So think about that. Be very reciprocal. Um, with people on social media. It's good at, at very good etiquette. And another way to build uh, your following is to use hashtags because people search for and follow hashtags. Uh, I'm sure many of you do follow hashtags. Um, I've gotten followers on Instagram because I follow a certain amount of hashtags and I'll comment on agent posts through a hashtag follow that I'm not actually following them. And then they'll react to my comment, they'll follow me, and I follow them back. So it is a way to get followers is what I'm saying. But make sure you are also commenting on hashtag follows. You have to treat them as regular followers and comment and react to their posts. So here are some of the best hashtags to use for listings. If you have a phone, you should probably want to take a picture of this screen. Um, I'll read some of them off to you. Home, property, for rent, for sale, just sold. Uh, home for sale, curb appeal, list, uh, listing agent, tips for sellers, seller pro tips, home for sale, sold, happy seller, multiple offers. So an example of some of the um, more popular hashtags for listings and then hashtags for buyers, uh, buyer wish list, virtual tour, relocation, find a home, uh, bring me buyers. Uh, buyer agent, house hunter, home ownership, home buyer, tips for home buyers, et cetera. So take a photo of that. And general use, um, I'll let you take a photo of that. But it's, uh, and one thing, one word of caution is you don't want to use the realtor hashtag, realtor life, realtor whatever, anything to do with Realtor, if you are not an actual member of the National Association of Realtors. I know the Lair agents, it's a Realtor organization, so we are. However, if you are affiliated with an agency that is not, um, don't use Realtor hashtags if you are not a Realtor. And uh, tips for attracting followers, uh, more tips here, is to post engaging real estate content. So at Lair, we get weekly 
uh, dynamic content emailed to us with editable Canva links, suggested captions, as well as hashtags and, co and contact CTA contact information, all done, as well as your stories, reels, everything sent to you every week. Um, so that's important to know uh, so that you have a presence on social media when you don't have the time to sit and record videos. Uh, just having a consistent presence is so important. So that first one is very important. So make sure uh, that you're getting that from your brokerage. And if you're not, certainly um, we do receive it at Lair um, at no cost to the agents. And I know there are companies out there also providing it for a fee if you choose. Another way um, you can uh, attract followers is by creating events. Um, and this would be for, you know, client appreciation event, uh, open house, buyer seminar, seller seminar. We did a sell seller seminar, first time seller seminar in uh, at a restaurant in Tewksbury. We had it catered at the, the restaurant catered it. We had an, uh, an appraiser, a, an attorney, a home inspector, a lender, all there. I spoke. Um, we mailed to pretty much the entire, well, I wouldn't say the entire town, but probably at least half the town. Uh, <clears throat> and we got business from it. So we closed business from it as a result. So anyway, point being is create excitement on social media um, events and then get your ask your family and friends to support you by clicking interested or going to the event because their friends will then in turn see more people will see the event. Um, another side note to this, support your local businesses by going to their events on social media, say you're going and they will love it because again, more people will see it. All right, back on track. I can't stress this enough, posting engaging video content. Um, if you lack inspiration for video content, any of the social media pieces that you're receiving through Lair every Monday, post it and then maybe on Friday, do a duplicate video of the content, right? You've got scripting right in your, in your captions or your script. So you, you shouldn't lack for, for inspiration. And then there are plenty of agents on social media you can follow um, that are putting out dynamic content for video. So lack of inspiration should not be a thing. There's enough out there. I think um, that's a whole other conversation. Anyway, um, and then offering weekly promotion. So we would do this as I was building the um, our Teams page. This was uh, about five, four, four or five years ago. I would do um, weekly drawings every Tuesday, every or wh whatever it was, Wednesday, Tuesday. Uh, I would do an Amazon gift card or um, a Starbucks, some, you know, some gift card. And we built from, we went from like, say, I want to say 450 likes to 3,200 likes um, in a matter of a year, maybe less. And some lenders co-sponsored that weekly thing, but it was, people knew. And so the, the challenge was get your friends and family to like the page. So we were constantly building and building and building and it worked. Um, all right, this was the one thing I said I was gonna talk about later and I still am gonna talk about it later, but I came up with this idea and it's and it's working and I love it. It's called the reverse review. I'll, I'll talk about it in a bit. It's another way to attract followers and I'll show you proof that it works. And then um, create a video interview series. Here's another thing you can do. And I've talked about this in past master classes about um, you can interview lenders, you can interview home inspectors, you can interview past clients, you can interview other agents. It's a way to build your following, uh, absolutely, and to connect with people. And last pro tip for attracting followers, please don't make it all about real estate. I go on so many, especially Instagram, and all you see is real estate. It's market update, success story, video, and it's great. It's all great content, but that's not all who we are. And I do believe that at the end of the day, many people will choose us as real estate agents more so for who we are as people and our level of confidence and how we speak, who we are as a person versus all that content. So I'm just saying, don't make it all about real estate, please. All right, let's get into the top marketing channels uh, for 2024. 
Uh, this isn't all social media, but it's definitely um, marketing channels that you're going to want to be aware of to start utilizing in the new year for your business. One is Google reviews. Um, you know, back in the day, uh, Zillow was the place where you wanted to be posting all of your reviews. I would say now that um, now the number one place you want to be getting all of your reviews posted is to Google. Now, people need to have a Gmail, a Google to a, to be able to get that Google review posted. Um, but by getting more Google reviews, you amplify your SEO, your search engine optimization, which helps you rank higher in Google search results. So if you are somebody who just Googles real estate agent in Tewksbury, Mass, and you don't see yourself coming up, even though you have um, a Google business page or you have a website, uh, it's because you're not getting enough Google reviews and you're not, therefore, you're not being seen in the results and you, people aren't clicking on your website. So it's all about the clicks and the reviews is really where you're, where you're going at with, with, with Google. So I'll show you in a minute how to get the Google reviews, um, but you definitely want to be getting Google, posting your reviews and, and they have to post it and they have to post it from a Gmail. So, um, and we'll also improve uh, the performance if you're doing Google local service ads as well too. That's the uh, pay for ads. All right, the second one is, believe it or not, your email newsletter. But think about it on steroids. Don't just think about it as it is. You have to think about it in terms of, okay, how can I take this one thing and tip it over on its head and make it, make it outrageously epic? There are ways. So um, you wanna start including all kinds of personal information in regards to personal meaning, what's happening in the local market, local happenings. Um, and then also include some of your transaction updates, your client updates, testimonials, as well as tips and videos. Your tips are going to give them a whiff them, the what's in it for me to even read it. Um, and consider emailing your newsletter out weekly instead of monthly to help you stay top of mind. Um, if you're thinking that weekly is too much, I would at least go to twice a month versus the once a month. It's also a great way to help people connect with you on social media. You should definitely be including, if any of you have signed up for the Katie Lance uh, newsletters, she sends out uh, weekly. She does it weekly, maybe even more than weekly, but I would say maybe at least weekly. And she it includes the link, the YouTube link to her video. And, but and prior to the YouTube link, she gives them a whiff them what's in it for them to watch it, which means don't spill all the beans. Don't give you the answer about the video. Just give them a, 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 a quick like, wow, you should really check this out. And here's why. And then it drives to her YouTube. So she's getting a ton of YouTube views on her videos. And this is what you want to do with your newsletter get do as many videos as you can possibly get because really that is a much more personal way to market than just putting out a uh, pen to paper type thing you know typing i would say the videos are the definitely the way to go all right another um way to build is community connections and this is a huge opportunity to level to leverage your presence uh, in any local market that you're covering how do you do this you attend as many town days as possible. Produce markets. Here's something, you know, people think, oh, produce market, it's apples and oranges and bananas. No, it's not. Uh, the, now the, the produce markets of the 2023, at least I can say here, uh, were wine, meat, stationery, jewelry, uh, massage therapy, yoga. All, And I'm like, oh my gosh, I cannot wait to get licensed and going on here because I'm going to start attending, you know, uh, these produce markets, um, we have a juicer, we could do uh, juice with a, you know, have a juice and take a, a buyer guide, you know, like, it's it's just a creative way. I mean, you've got to do things differently, right? So and then there's craft fairs, especially at this time of year, but um, volunteering is another amazing way to have a community connection, an authentic, wonderful community connection. Um, 
you can even brand it. You know, if you're a solo agent or a team, you can take a day or two, or, you know, or a day a quarter um, and brand it, get t-shirts made, you know, showcase the whole thing. But, you know, with the, obviously with the right intention of certainly just helping, um, it's just an amazing thing to do. Um, I love it. And then grand openings, um, you know, get excited for your uh, local entrepreneurs who are, you know, opening a second or third business or even a first business, support them in that, um, tag it, film it and tag them in it on social media and say, what a great day. I can't, you know, um, we just had it at so-and-so salon. Um, people, people love that and appreciate that. Uh, new construction developments, um, do a video tour of new construction um, developments happening in the area, letting people know about them. Again, what's in it for them to follow you. And then events at town hall or your local country club, be there, be present. Library events as well. Um, and then sporting events at local schools. And then at the bottom, I have sport uh, sponsorship if you choose to. That's another way to have a, a consistent presence. A lot of parents sitting there um, at the sporting events. And then um, Hanukkah uh, manure lightings, as well as Christmas tree lightings. We did uh, the Tewksbury Christmas tree lighting, I want to say four years ago, maybe. And it was loads of fun. We set up a table, gave hot chocolate, um, lots of business cards. Uh, I think we did donuts, too. I forget. But and then Santa came in. It was a fun thing. And we recorded it. It was on social media. It was really fun. Um, and then all of you just recently have done um, the pie event uh, through Lair, which was fun seeing those pictures. Again, some of you did videos, which was epic. Photos with Santa. So a lot of, especially now, there's so many um, great ways to get creative, but there's a lot of ways to have a very strong community presence. Um, just got to get creative and um, think outside the box. And I can't stress this enough, open houses. Um, in my first year, open houses were 33% of my business. So the way I looked at open houses was it is a free way, unless the listing agent is charging you, which I, whatever. But it is a free way to meet people who are coming out of their homes on a weekend, if it's a weekend uh, open house, People are coming to you is what I'm saying. You don't have to pay for leads. You don't have to pay for mailings. You don't have to cold call. These are people who are coming to you, right? It's an amazing opportunity. So again, you want to create that event on social media. You want to go live and invite your connections um, as well as mail invitations or call, uh, in, or call to invite the neighbors. You definitely want to... Um, Think of how can you maximize this opportunity? Every time you get an open house opportunity, think how can I maximize it instead of just sitting there waiting for someone to come in, I'll bring my busy work and I'll wait. No, you've got to amp it. You've got to like, as the, as the program says, uh, there's a program 10 exit, right? So make sure that you have an exclusive neighbor event 30 minutes prior and that you have a lender presence who's also co-marketing this event with you. And then include this in your email newsletter. Let people know. So it's an event on social media. You've got uh, handwritten notes or calls to the neighbors. You've got it in your newsletter. You're going live and you're going live the day of the event. This is before the neighbor only. So you're, the sellers need to be aware of the neighbor only. And you also need to let them know you're going to be arriving at least 20 minutes early to do your video. And a pro tip on the um, the preview video, a couple of pro tips, make sure the house is ready. So make sure that conversation has been had. All the lights are on, the beds are made, the towels are even, everything looks great. And all the, make sure the lights are on and that you are not hogging the camera. You're doing the initial, hi everybody, this is Renee Tompkins at Lear Realty. I'm at 123 Main Street in Tewksbury. Want to show you this amazing property that's open today from one to three. Let's take a look. Flip the camera over and now make it about the property. Um, if you have heels and there are high uh, and there are hardwood floors, take your heels off. You don't want any distraction. Remember, it's about the property. And then close with a call to action. If you can't make today's open house, send me a message. I'd love to schedule a time for you to see this amazing property. Thanks so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Wrap it up. Um, and then at the event, 
again, make it, make it exciting. Don't just make it a standard open house with your tote bag to do letters just in case nobody comes. You want to have a giveaway. Maybe the lender can co-sponsor that. Um, I used to do a Keurig coffee maker occasionally. I would do um, tickets uh, to an event if there was a big event going on locally or um, a gift certificate to a local restaurant or spa. Um, and then obviously have your free buyer and seller guides out there. Um, lots of signage. Just don't put one at the intersection in the house. Have them around as many as you can safely place because um, it's about you and your brand recognition. Here's some ideas to um, have at the open house too. We did um, face painting, wine tasting. We had a food truck once. I mean, these are things you can do to make it an event, right? So, um, so many ideas out there. Um, it, it's, I love open houses. All right. And here's another way to um, uh, get back to basics is to go back to doing mailers. I think a lot of people get out of, doing mailers um, and, you know, they're on social media inconsistently, not really getting stuff from there either. Again, it, anything you're doing, you've got to go all in. So if you decide to make social media, what we call a bucket of business building, I said that correctly, I can't believe it. <laughs> um, then you got to go all in with it. It can't be just be something that's over here and you do it once in a while or you're on it for fun mostly, but occasionally you'll interact with people. You've got to, again, you got to go all in just like with these mailers. You can't do a one-off mailing because you've had a, a sale and then that's it. The chances of getting a hit on that is pretty low. You've got to be consistent. So um, you want to be seen everywhere. So you got to do postcards or flyers at least monthly. I would say even twice a month. You've got to be very, very consistent. And then at the same time as you're advertising, say, in pick an area, South Tewksbury, you're doing postcards. You also want to be advertising on social media in South Tewksbury, right? So you are seen everywhere. And then consist, uh, consider investing in uh, like a, a higher end customized magazine uh, to send a certain of your, a certain percentage or all of your past clients. I did it um, and people loved it. I can't wait to pick it up out here. So it's definitely a way to impress uh, and to stay top of mind as well too. So think mailers, but there are many different type of mailers you can do. And then if cost is an issue, ask one of your preferred partners to co-sponsor you. Mailer suggestions uh, for content, you can consider market updates, exclusive coupons to local businesses uh, that you agree uh, to, you know, say, I'll pay for the printing for the coupon or get the word out. Will you give all of my clients that use the code Realtor Joe Smith or whatever, 10% uh, off? So love that idea. Home maintenance tips, seasonal recipes, event invitations, general tips, sold year to date. I mean, there's, again, take a picture of this. Another pro tip is to use, uh, include a QR code to your website or your link tree on all of your mailings. You can use a QR code to your YouTube channel. And here we go. The magic, the magic, uh, I don't know, the magic uh, winner here. Video content, anybody, any social media manager, any social media coach will tell you that the number one way uh, to build your following is going to be through video content on social media. I'm speaking social media is what I'm talking about here. And then engaging and being consistent. Just, just that. And then also having your, your dynamic content. But all of it helps. All of it does. You, but you've got to be consistent and engaging and then get that video content out. Um, uh, pro tips with, with content, you know, like people say, I don't have time. I'm too busy. Batch record. You've got a batch record. I mean, I know people that batch record just every early Saturday morning. I've done it. Not go, Nothing going on here yet. I'm in my office here. Batch recording four videos for the week. Um. 
include your videos in your newsletter, as I said earlier, and add a QR code linking them if you want uh, to your, your video channel, uh, your YouTube or whatever um, hosting uh, site that you're using for your videos. And then, you know, think about it this way. If you were a consumer, I don't know that many consumers would pick someone just based on uh, the content alone. I think you really do need videos because it puts a face and a name. It puts credibility and trust. It, it, like it's like a bridge that video, having video content, it just crosses the bridge, makes it people, it makes it easier for people to cross the bridge, I should say. So um, definitely if you're uncomfortable with video, I get it. The first video I did, I look back at it and I, I giggle, right? Because it's like I was so uptight, you know, and just admit, just be be okay with that. Be okay with it being uptight. Be okay with the the stuttering or the oh my gosh, how many times did I say huh or whatever your catchphrase? You know, so what? Done is better than perfect, right? So just do it. Just get, and the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll be. So just, I can't stress that enough. And then especially right now in this market, you want to be preaching those buyer agent stories. Um, you know, lots going on in the market, uh, in the real estate industry right now, with especially with buyer agency. So we should be inundating social media with uh, buyer agency success stories. Uh, and here's some content suggestions. Again, you can take a photo of this, but uh, one should be the importance of having a buyer's agent and, and the role of a great buyer's agent. Here's what a great buyer's agent is going to do for you. Share success stories and testimonials. Success stories and testimonials, two different things in my mind. Testimonials come from the client and they're written. Usually they can be verbal and if they are verbal, that's gold, right? If they're a video, testimonial, epic, but success stories really are more from your point of view. This is where we, we started. This is where we ended. And this is what happened along the way. Um, you should even have perhaps a section on your website that talks about um, buyer success stories uh, under your, um, if you have a buyer tab on your buyer agent tab or uh, tab for buyers, create a menu, drop down our page for um, success stories. And then uh, free buyer guides to home ownership, as well as the home buying process. And I put in video because, again, this is something uh, that is just more authentic done in video, you know. Um, and then you could do interviews with lenders, buyer seminars, buyer tips. So a lot, tons of content. Again, content should, lack of content should not be the issue. And really time, even if you are very busy in time, just batch record and you can obviously make time to do that. It's not a lack of time. It may just be a lack of priority. So maybe perhaps you can do that early on a Saturday morning before your house is, is you know, chaotic and going. Uh, property previews, this is an epic way, um, you know, and you're doing that, it's an, another agent's listing. Obviously you, you must disclose that it's somebody else's listing, um, but, get those property preview videos going. Uh, love to, I love seeing that stuff. Uh, Lily Dumont on Silver Key Home, uh, Silver Key's Home. I said it wrong, we're sorry. <laughs> but she just did an amazing, epic video. She had, it was, an, it was enlisted by another agent, which obviously she recognized in her post. And she did an amazing, she had an amazing video done of somebody else's listing to get buyers with their approval. I mean, what an ingenious idea. And I'm seeing more and more of it on social media. So as long as you get the approval, obviously you have to have the approval of the other broker and you acknowledge who that is because the multiple listing uh, listing agreement gives permission for that. Um, but you do need permission from the broker if you're going to be marketing it on social media. Uh, but that's just an amazing idea. Um, and she did a wonderful job with it. So check it out. All right, let's get into the differences between networking and marketing. Because there is a difference. Uh, marketing focuses on, and this is what we do at Lair mostly, is focusing on groups of people, uh, tells the story 
uh, to many people, right? Especially on social media. This is social media marketing and looks after a brand's reputation, uh, creates content to keep top of mind, which we get every Monday, um, as well as analyzes market data, delivers averages. So on your market, uh, your customizable market updates, we get that. And then shares client experiences. And we do always focus on delivering values. We want the content to be um, very valuable um, for both the agents to receive as well as the consumer to read. And the goal of marketing is to connect, right? So, but networking is is different. Networking focuses on the individual and is relationship-based. Very intentful, very purposeful. And it builds mutually beneficial, mostly business-to-business -business relationships, seeking to help others build connections. Um, there is a book, Julie Oaks, uh, on our team had sent to me, it's called Blue Fishing. And it's all about this, networking and connecting and, and being what's called a blue fisher. So finding out how to help and serve others by solving problems, being the problem solver by having such a long list of connections that if somebody needed anything, you had somebody to recommend. Um, great book. So again, it creates a web of connections that makes it easier to experience opportunity. Phenomenal. Because there is that law of reciprocity. And if you do somebody a favor, you do enough favors, at some point, you're going to start receiving favors. It's just, it, it can't, it, it's, it's a law. And it can't help but happen. So networking is huge in that respect. And again, the goal of networking is to build and nurture relationships for everyone's mutual benefit. So if you are not networking, if you do not belong to a networking group, consider uh, including networking as one of your business building buckets for 2024. Um, there are networking groups that are free. There are networking groups that are expensive. Um, and there are also, you can start your own networking group. We have agents in Lair that do their own. Uh, we have agents on the team that do their own networking group. Uh, so, I love that idea, um, but there are many options for networking. So um, consider. So question, are you marketing or networking on social media? Hopefully you're doing both. Um, I, I look at social media as such an epic opportunity for anybody building a business. It's, a, it's an amazing tool. So let's talk about the rule of seven. What is the rule of seven? Uh, the rule of seven says that the average customer needs to encounter your message at least seven times before they'll reach out to you. This doesn't necessarily have to do with social media. Um, this could also be, have to do with mailings, um, phone calls if you're making phone calls, et cetera. So, but today we're focusing obviously on social media, but um, you know, so when you think about Again, this is why video is so important because it actually does put a more authentic spin on your profile, whatever, you know, whatever social media channels you're on. Um, and it's all about frequency and familiarity. People need to know, like, and trust you before they will do business with you. That is 100% fact. Um, and most people will cross that bridge the more of your videos they watch. So something to consider. All right. Next, we're going to talk about something that I know um, a lot of you get in experience, especially on um, Instagram, are random followers. These like completely random person will, will follow you and you're like, what? Who are they and why are they? So why do you get random followers? Um, for a variety of reasons, honestly, some do it because they actually just like how your profile looks. They like the consistency of your content. They find it interesting. So they want to follow you for inspiration. Others might follow you in hopes of getting a follow back. Um, and then some might follow you through a hashtag uh, as well as through um, suggested um, contacts. But there are some things you should know about random followers. Um, so a couple of things. The pros are that you get increased engagement and more visibility because you get a higher follower count. Um, 
and that helps you. But there's a couple of serious cons that you want to be aware of as well. Um, there are some random followers that are actually fake or bought accounts, not bought like purchase, bought like robot. Um, and those can negatively impact your account's engagement rate severely because these people will follow you and then they won't do anything else. They won't ever engage with you. So you might have a very high level. If you have a high level of these random followers, you, then you've got a high level of low engagement on your profile and that's not helping you at all. So again, algorithms always prioritize accounts with higher engagement rates. So you may have a group of people that engage with you consistently, but again, if you've got 70, 80 random followers on your list that aren't ever engaging with you, that's really not helping you at all. So how do you identify a fake follower? Um, number one, some red flags uh, are that you, they'll have like a low amount of followers and a high amount of accounts that they're following. So you might see like Joe Schmo in Indonesia, he's got, he's following um, 3,500 people, but he's got 12 followers and he's only got one little post and it's him hugging a dog or something. So random stuff. Um, another way to identify them is a low amount of followers. Um, oh, I just said that. Uh, random and sometimes inappropriate conduct or uh, content. I got a follower from um, a, a girl. She was a, she claimed she was a realtor in Dallas or some some big city, and she had the most inappropriate uh, content. I mean, it was like sexual content, and I'm, so I removed her and I googled her, and I didn't see any. Realtor, her name never came up on, on, under any anything. So I, I don't know. Um, so if you choose to block them, you can certainly do that. And I would recommend getting rid of these people because although they do add to your your number, your following number, they're not helping you at all because they're not authentically engaging with you, uh, and they could hurt you. They could also scam you. Um, and duplicate your account. I mean, there's there's a lot going on in that <clears throat> with that. So I would certainly recommend being um, being safer. So you go to your profile, um, you click the three dots in the upper right hand con corner, and then you block them uh, and confirm your choice. So definitely, I would do that, but that's certainly up to you. And here are some pro tips to keep your um, your account sort of healthy as I like to refer to it, is review your followers on a monthly basis. We do get busy and sometimes we get followers without realizing it. Um, although we do get the notification, but we may be distracted and just simply aren't really paying that much attention. So make be mindful to review your followers on a monthly basis and search for yourself to ensure that your account, your account has not been duplicated. Uh, watch for password reset emails that you did not initiate. They will give you an option. They'll, they should say in the email, if you did not request a password reset, click this right now. And that you should do. I had that happen to me um, about a couple months ago. So, um, And then be diligent about removing fake or bot followers if you choose to. Um, it, it is a personal choice. That's all I'll say about it. <laughs> all right. Here's the thing that I'm so excited to talk to you about, um, the reverse review. So this was something, an idea that I had because I feel, well, let me just get into it and I'll, I'll talk about it, um, but it's working. So a, a reverse review is, you know, as agents, we're always sharing our own success stories and testimonials um, through real estate that our clients have taken the time to write about us, which we should still do. We should always keep doing that. That is very important. But a reverse review is when we write and share a review of another local business, but we do it in a certain way. First, we write a Google review of that business from our business email. So your layer email is a Gmail based email. So you wanna be doing it from your layer email You'll go, and I'll show you in a minute how to do it, but you'll Google the business 
and then you'll write a review. At the end of your review, and it, this is a five-star review, you're going to note your social media handle on the review. So you're going to say, um, and I'll show you one that I did in the results that I got. Um, and then you're going to copy and paste the review into a Canva template, which I will share in the comments. I will share my Canva template for you all in the, the comments of this uh, after we wrap it up. You're going you're gonna to type it on a Canva review. It's got your picture in the bottom of the review. It mentions the, um, the company's website and the five stars. And then you're going to post that on social media to the standard feed and the stories feed. And you're going to check in and tag that business. And then you're also going to create a highlight for Instagram and showcase all of your five-star business reviews in that highlight. As a result, you're going to be getting a lot of business follows. And this is good for you because people, a lot of people follow businesses, right? And some of them go in to see who they're following as a way to get more followers. It, it's a great chain reaction and it's working. I'll show you. So here's what I did. Uh, here's my... Here's my template, which I said I will share with you in the comments after the class is wrapped up. But I wrote my experience at Pure Salon Spa. I wrote it. I copied it just as I did from the Google. This was the Google review that I, I typed. And then I copied and pasted it in this Canva template. And then in my post, I write, I had such a phenomenal experience at Pure Salon Spa today. So I thought I'd share it with y'all. This is now my official go-to spa for a great hairstyle, massage, and facial. I use the five-star emojis. And then in my um, post on social media, check out Pure Salon Spa at 8003 Bardstown Road in Louisville. You'll be forever grateful you did. And at the bottom, you can see I did, um, I hashtagged it. And then I also, um, I tagged them. And then I shared this post again to my stories. And if you go to my Instagram page at the real Renee Tompkins, you'll see that I have um, highlights and one of them is favorite businesses. So they're getting showcased uh, there as well too. So here's the result. You can see it. Pure Salon Spa was wowed by this post. And so they followed me back. And thank me, they thank me on um, the Google as well. Here's another result that I got. So this company, Mahonia, I love this place. This is a plant shop. Oh my God, it's so epic. Anyway, um, I wrote another, if you go again, go to at the real Renee Tompkins, you'll see all of my um, my reviews. I, ha I haven't done many of them. I think I've only done like five now, um, but they have over almost 14,000 followers and they're following just shy of 900. And I happen to be one of them. Um, and I don't see any other realtors in their followers. So epic. Um, and one last result I'll share with you. This was a local Massachusetts company that we get our yearly um, <clears throat> awards done through. And I asked them, I said, um, you know, you, you guys do a great job for me when I went in to pick them up could I ask you for a favor? I'll, you know, I'm glad to write a, a Google review for you uh, and I'll even share it on social media. Would you follow me? And um, as a, you know, as, as, as a, um, you know, to, to thank, you know, to thank me and, or to just support my business. And they were like, Oh my God, are you kidding? Absolutely. So here we are another follower. So here's how, um, but, but here's some pro tips actually on taking a bit further. Again, always think, be thinking, how can I 10X this? this? This is the way my mind has been working. So you can add these businesses to your newsletter if they have an email and you could ask them, just say, I'd love to add you to my newsletter. What, what email can I send it to? Send them holiday greeting cards. Check in every time you visit them on social media. Invite them to take part in your events. Interview them or even co-host events with them. Treat them as part of your sphere now, right? And trust me, 
you want this. You can even have, um, I used to do the customized magnets, calendars or cleaning tips, whatever, um, with my name and uh, contact information. And I would say, could I leave these at your register? Would you, would you mind? That would be so helpful to me. You know, over time as the relationship's building, not right off the bat, I wouldn't do that, but <clears throat> something, you know, again, it's one of those recip reciprocity uh, and it works. I'm telling you so. Think 10x always. What else can I do? So, and who can you also, th these are ideas for who you can reverse review. Pretty much anybody that you've done business with that you like. But don't just think like in terms of hairstylist, nail technician, massage therapist. Think bigger picture like pet hospital, child care, auto repair, anybody even like um, like a health food store. If you go into a health food store, we frequent this health food store in Louisville um, and we love it. So that's gonna be my next uh, reverse review. If you can include pictures of yourself or pictures of the facility in your post, even better. So how do you leave a Google review? Um, for those of you that are unaware, you go to Google and you um, just Google the business, right? So here is an example. I just Googled Pure Salon Spa. And this was what came back to me. And on the right, I could click on their website, but I didn't. I went to, I saw their reviews. And so you click on Google reviews and it'll say, leave a review and start typing, give a star rating. But make sure it's important that you include the link to your social media uh, handle. It's not going to be a link, but it's just going to like tag yourself sort of, you know, so at the end of the review, I, I wrote at the real Renee Tompkins and boom, follow back was awesome. And what to do if they don't have a Google profile? Um, it could be a very small business or a new, very new business that hasn't established their Google business page yet. Search for them on social media. I would say most people have at least a social media presence. Um, if they have neither of these, then write them a handwritten note, take a photo of the, of the, of the note and share that on social media without tagging them because you can't. Um, but that I would say would be a rare occur occurrence. So think of, again, think of social media is one of the easiest ways to build and maintain authentic connections. It really is. You just have to treat it more like a telephone than a television. I love that. All right, let's get into uh, wrapping up. I think we are. Are we good on time? Oh yeah, we're wrapping up. Some daily success rituals um, is to, and these are just generic success rituals with whatever um, you're doing. But you know, think of it in terms of social media is to be purposeful. Start the day with intention and think, who can I connect with today? And write it down because I really believe that goals and intention should be written down. If it's not in writing, it, it's easy to get overlooked. And a pro tip that I learned easy on in my um, real estate career is always keep a night uh, a notepad near your bed at night because you don't want to be like, oh, I could do this. I could do write it down and get it out of your mind and onto paper. And that way you're not obsessing about anything. I know some of us who happen to go through insomniac insomniac stages um, have have that happen. So I always keep a night pad, a notepad near my nightstand. All right. And don't be so results driven that you forget to enjoy the journey. I know a lot of agents who will do, you know, they'll be doing great with their video content and then they'll just stop. And it's like, you got to just enjoy what you're doing. And if you, you know, with anything, if you get too results driven, you, you, you'll veer off and be willing to step outside your comfort zone. Um, which is in conflict sort of what, which what I'm going to say later in the call, which is we're getting there sooner rather than later. And then too often people attach success with expected results, which again is what I just said. And when they don't achieve the desired results in their perceived reasonable time frame, they stop. But you got to, you really do have to keep going. If any of you have read The Alchemist, uh, then this you'll understand that this is no way to go. 
All right. And then lastly is always think strategically and see the big picture. Again, who can I connect with today? How can I provide value? All right. I've got some kudos. This is um, for both October and November because I did not do a live call in October. I was on vacation. Uh, we have kudos for Diana Paquette and Brian Pereira, Lita Phillips, Sarah Lyman, Kara Labonte, Dan Capra, Olivia Paris, Kimberly Kuplas, Bridget Diorio, Sarah Lewis, Michelle Saltmarsh, Robin Megenheim, Casey Gray, Tanya McClendon, Robin Foley, Lily Dumont, who did that amazing video uh, of the listing there, and Johnny Fallon. Congratulations. And these are people that I'm connected with um, that I'm seeing. If we're not connected, certainly let's, let's do so. Um, but I, I love watching and you're very inspiring. So thank you for that. Wrapping up mindsets, mindsets for success is, and I will always have this in here, is to lean in and level up. Excuses don't get results. That's something I always tell myself. Um, and for each headache, this came from James Clear, who wrote Atomic Habits. For each headache you face, ask yourself, is this mostly real or mostly imagined? Solve the real problems and release the imaginary ones. How many of us obsess about things like, you know, we go on tangents in our own mind. It's amazing. Uh, also, focus on the process and not the results. I can't stress that enough. Um, success isn't just about reaching your goal. It's about the person you become along the way. 110%, absolutely. Uh, and one of my other favorite quotes by Tony Robbins is, everything happens at the moment of decision. Um, yes, it does. And one that I threw in here is get comfortable being uncomfortable. All growth happens when we push ourselves. And it, it feels uncomfortable. It's supposed to. So I have my recommended reading for the month. You know, I'm a bibliophile. I love books, love reading, love learning. Uh, the Comfort Zone. And this book actually talks about the magic happening in our comfort zone. So I have not read this yet. I just got this uh, from Amazon uh, this, this week. I cannot wait to dive into it, uh, but I'm excited um, to read this um, and share it with you all. The next time we meet, I will definitely talk about it. Uh, so, and if you are looking for social media inspiration, I would love to connect with you. Uh, my handle on all of the um, social media pages is at the real Renee Tompkins. There's no H in Tompkins. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, threads, YouTube, and Pinterest. So I'd love to connect with you and I will follow you back um, and we can inspire each other. Are there any uh, questions for me? I have a few minutes, actually. I don't see any coming through. All right. So join me for the next social media class in December. It will be at the end of the month. I'd love to connect with you then. And then um, again, just as a reminder, never miss an opportunity to learn and grow. Be sure to sync your calendar with the Lair Training calendar by visiting LairRealty.com forward slash training. Uh, and then there's easily uh, instructions there that you can um, sync your calendar so you never miss a class. So thank you so much for joining us today. I loved it. Um, if you think of any questions in the meantime, between now and December's masterclass, certainly send an email over to Happy Agent and I'll be glad to respond. Um, and I will drop the link to that Canva template uh, in the comments this afternoon. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day.